Okay, another completely unscheduled live stream. Um, something I've been thinking about doing for a little bit. And of course, because you can watch this later, you know, um, sometimes doing these off the cuff talks, things that kind of come to me, I think. Well, if you catch it, you can ask some questions. If not, just hit the comments below. I'll probably answer it. Maybe not right away like I do in the live stream. Um, but you're always welcome to answer or ask questions. So uh, I thought I would talk about uh, a subject that comes up rather often. And in case you're wondering, I'm right next to these guys here, everybody's just chilling out. It's a quiet morning. <clears throat> um, kind of nice. Beautiful day. A little chilly. Sort of uh, a minus five or so, so it's Celsius. So that's not too bad. Anyway, so I thought I would talk about a get or a request. I kind of get a lot um, because we do we do that here uh, which is trimming horses trimming horses hooves and we've got a bunch of videos up what later on when I'm back on my computer uh, I will link some relatively pertinent um, videos that I've done on the subject because I can't cover everything here and I've covered you know pieces of the hoof uh, you know the subject of trimming a little bit taking care of your horse why you might do this so I thought I'd sort of squish it into this live video and if people have questions they could ask if you don't have any questions I hope you enjoy this I will try to keep uh, my checking in because what I, I gotta check the comments in here and then I gotta click a button and, and then it sort of comes up and it goes away so uh, ask some questions if you want to I might not get to it immediately uh, but I'll do a question period, question and answer period, uh, part way through uh, what I'm talking about. So I'll break it up in pieces. <clears throat> now, um, trimming your own hooves or your own horse's hooves, um, it's a big deal. I get the question a lot for multiple reasons. So maybe this applies to you, maybe it doesn't. Uh, the first thing that I usually hear about uh, which is which is interesting um, it's interesting is usually people say to me the person that I have now uh, uh, I'm not sure if they're doing it right or I ask questions and I don't really get the answer that I like and a lot of this channel is about asking questions feel free to be open feel free to open up and tell a story feel free to to you know not be worried about asking a bad question, the wrong question, an inappropriate question. Uh, I mean, if you're rude, it's a different story, obviously. But but nice questions, well, you know, sort of well thought out, and, and I'm having this problem. Welcome. So I really encourage asking questions. Um, and quite a long time ago, when I had questions, I didn't get any answers. And so that was my... So I can really relate to the people that say to me... Um, you know, I, I I don't understand why my horse trips a lot. I don't understand why my horse can't go out on trails. And, and there seems to be a catch-all answer. Well, just shoo them. Um, not everybody's like that, but I what I hear is that. What I hear is people saying, you know, my farrier just says, just shoo them, it'll be fine. And then when they go and look up more information, they say, well, I don't understand why I have to. What seems to be the problem now? why does my horse need shoes um you'll hear something about them being ouchy or uh well you don't want to get a stone bruise and um lots of little reasons some of them valid some of them are a little yeah you know really so um the <laughs> the the subject about whether or not you can get that information from the person you're supposed to be trusting comes up way too often and so that's fine um, I think it's great when people start looking around even people that deal with me 
and uh, they'll say, oh, I'm going to take some and do some research. I think it's awesome. I think it's great to get as much knowledge as you can and bring that in um, and, and, and then apply that to what the decision you may make, the choices that you, you, you choose, or the actions that you take, whether it's do it yourself or you know, hire somebody to do something. And that can apply to anything with your horses or property. You know, we've talked a lot about construction here too. Some things you get somebody else to do. Um, same thing with hooks. But this conversation is about those people that are thinking, well, I've been through that. I've done a lot of research or some research and I'm finding maybe, maybe I should do this myself. Um, and I would say that for most people, it's very possible to trim your own horse's hooves. Um, we're not going to get into shoeing. We're not a, talking about shoeing here. I mean, you have to be able to work iron. Uh, uh, shoeing, whether you just, whether you use a, a forge to, to melt the things a little, to make them softer and malleable, to shape it to what uh, the hoof looks like, I guess. Uh, that's totally separate topic. Um, I don't work metal, so I'm not going to teach it, um, and I don't advocate it for other reasons. That's a totally separate thought. We get it, if we get into talking about shoeing or not shoeing, never get out of this. But to talk about the idea of um, trimming them yourself is not so hard. So, as I said before, I'm going to put some links down below later about some books. Uh, some videos, uh, some of my own videos, not just my videos, uh, other videos, a DVD set that you can buy, people that you can uh, uh, look into to see what they're doing, who they're teaching as well, and uh, some uh, Facebook groups. I mean, I know a lot of people don't really want to get on the Facebook. I'm distracted because this guy's coming. Look at this guy. Hey, good looking. Isn't he a good looking horse? Looks good in the uh, in the sun. Anyhow, so um, so a lot of information out there, tons, and a lot of people say, well, gosh, you know, I look around and I see all this information out there. Um, what what do I do? What, how, which do I follow? What what is it that I? It's the best thing. Hey, man, live stream. Do a live stream near horse. Hi, buddy. What are you doing? You want to say hi to everybody? Oh, there you go. See, you're famous. Okay, let's move back a little before I get distracted. Okay, <clears throat> so we get into the topic of of where you'd want to start now. Trimming your horse is a big deal you can completely wreck them or you can fix them i mean there is a lot of black and white there uh, if if you let's see what's the best way to put this with good understanding a reasonably good understanding of what's going on inside of the hoof you're going to have a tough time trying to figure out sort of critical thinking wise to figure out how do I trim this thing? What do I need to do? So my first tip to you guys, finally, almost 10 minutes in, is to study, 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 study. So again, I'll put some books below the envelope, but here, let me show you something. Okay, hang on, let me just do 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 do. Come over here a little, get a little bit closer here. Okay, so um, when I talk about studying, I don't just mean books, and I definitely don't just mean videos, because you can't learn this stuff just from that. Um, you can learn a lot. You can have a pretty good understanding. Hands-on is everything. Uh, so if you want to do it, um, you probably want to find somebody that can help you a little bit with it, but there's a lot of people that have that problem with, I don't know who to talk to, or can't afford to be taught, or something along those lines. So this is more of a how to get started a little bit on your own. Um, 
So the first thing I recommend is trying to figure out where your local stockyard is. And it's kind of a creepy, weird thing to do, but essentially you're going to want to go get some legs of horses. Um, and this is the most in-depth, best way to kind of get into it. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to, but it is a really good way. And it's when I bring these things out, look at this guy. Hey, what have I got? It's not for you. Yeah. So, no. When you get when you get these legs, um, you'll want to freeze them because they they might start getting kind of stinky if you leave them out. They'll rot. Um, when they're frozen, you can take a look. They're not going to smell. It's, they're just it's it's like taking out a steak from the freezer or something. You know, it's no big deal. <clears throat> um, but you want to be able to inspect these things, touch them, you know, look at them. Ah, don't touch. I dropped it. Ooh, he's getting so he's licking his chops. No. No. Um, and the reason you really want to kind of get here, cause, cause the pictures and video can't give you a feel of depth. They can't give you a, a feel of concavity or or or, uh, or texture. Um, none of these things that gives you a nice 3d now this is completely this is obviously not a whole leg um, this is just a capsule uh, over time you might get interested enough to figure that part out how to take them apart and get the pieces to study but you really want to be able to I mean you can mess with your horse but before you get to trimming I highly highly recommend um, you know having the stomach or the desire to mess around with with the dead ones because you can't wreck them so that's the first tip if you can't do that if you don't know where to go if you can't find some place that actually gives these things away for free because we do i can get as many as i want um as long as there's enough supply they give them away for free if you can't do that then your next step is of course the live animals before you start trimming your horses or God forbid somebody else's horse or something like that. Uh, really study these these the ideas of these things. So I brought these out because I want to talk about um, a little bit of, of what I look for when I'm looking when I show up and I look. So I've done some videos on that stuff, but I can explain it a bit here. So, with, with all of that, understanding the anatomy, understanding what's inside these things is really important because it's going to allow you to critically think about how and why you're trimming and what you're trimming off. Um, there are, of course, a, good, a, a bunch of good methodologies out there. I'd say, actually not a bunch, maybe two or three that I think, ah, they're pretty good. Um, but after you kind of get that figured out a bit, you're going to be critically thinking because every hoof is different. They're all different. I mean, there are similarities, obviously. But they're all, they've all got their own possible pathologies, uh, different environments, pasture to sand to gravel to rocky ground, summer, winter, spring really wet. Um, each part of the year also gives you a bit of a challenge on exactly how to go about dealing with the growth that is happening so with an understanding of the inside the methodology starts to not matter as much as you start to think about huh you know what's happening here this little bit's growing over there, this little bit's kind of come here and this little bit's wearing down fast and this little bit's laid over and this little whatever um, and uh, from there you can you can uh, you can maybe even come up a little bit with your own, but it's probably going to mirror somebody else's. So, um, anyway. so when I talk about the uh, the understanding the inside of the hoof, these types of models, I mean, you can you can buy these things. Up. You don't have to make your own. They're actually very simple. I think I did a video about that. Um, but anyways, this is essentially some horse's hoof, and we've preserved it. 
YouTube crashed. Sorry, everybody. At least one time it crashes. <clears throat> uh, anyways, where I was, I don't know where it, uh, I'll start again. Um, you can sometimes get these, you know, you can buy them from people or buy them from a local person who's a veterinarian or something like that that has these kinds of things. Or at least just go look at them. A lot of veterinarians are very friendly and they want people to learn as well. But essentially what we're looking at is just a hoof that's been cut in half and preserved. Then, when you open it up, you can see all the pieces inside and how they work. The biggest thing I get asked is, um, I don't know how much I can cut off. You know, when I go to sort of trim off some pieces of frog or the bars or something, People always say, oh, I'm so scared to do that. I never know how much I can take off. But if you can understand the inside of the hoof like this, this is not the healthiest, but this is an idea, um, then you can get a better idea of how much you can take off uh, versus how much you shouldn't take off. So the, the age-old saying, in most cases, less is better. Um, you know, do little bits, but anyways. This, this is a great start. This will get your critical thinking started so that you don't have to rely on one methodology or, you know, or, or two or one way of thinking about these things. You think, oh, I should just do this and this is how it should look. It's not always the case. When you understand how this works and how this works, it's a whole new ballgame. Um, so the next thing you want to do once you have a pretty good understanding of how that hoof is built and how it works and why it works and uh, um, whatnot, <clears throat> then you're going to want to you're going to want to look at a lot of other trims. Um, and there's plenty of uh, groups on Facebook that share this kind of thing. So when you're looking around, you can say, "Oh, okay, well that looks like this, and I wonder why you did this," and ask questions. Um, so this is all before you start really messing around yourself uh, on the hook. So we're just starting from the very basics and working our way upwards. When you have a pretty good idea of how that works, then you're going to need some tools. Um, but I, I mean, I, I really do highly recommend working with somebody, talking with somebody directly, having them with you while you get started. But this is a little bit more of how to do things. If you're stuck, you've got your own place, you, you own a couple of horses, having a, you know, the second reason why people want to trim their own horse's hooves is because of the cost. Um, if you're shoeing a horse, it's quite expensive. You know, all four feet can be anywhere from two to 400 bucks, depending on the farrier. Um, if you're just doing the fronts, it's a little less. If you're just doing a trim, it can range from everywhere from I've heard 30 bucks, which is super cheap, to 75 or so, you know, just for a barefoot trim, um, depending on the experience and the knowledge of the person who's doing the job and how busy they are. You know, as a capitalistic sort of world that we are living in, uh, demand sort of demands higher pay in a way. <clears throat> um, Anyway, so there's the cost of, of trimming that people uh, would like to reduce. But in some cases, the cost can be higher if you wreck your horse. So really prepare for this. I believe anybody can do it. I believe anybody can learn enough to get the good basics down and build on that. It's actually even easier if you're doing only your own horses because you can get used to just that pathology, those problems, the, the heels are having a problem, the toes are having a problem, the frog has a problem, the bars are having a problem, the sole's got a problem, or all of them, God forbid that kind of thing happens, or the whole foot is wrecked. Um, it'll be your hoof to fix. Um, and uh, you know, you'll be practicing on your own horse. And so when I say less is more, it's really true. You don't, I mean, you can do too little. Um, but doing too little can, in a lot of cases, be a lot better than doing too much because then they have to recover or rehabilitate from it. So something to think about. I'm not saying just go out and start willy-nilly doing things. Now, the next thing you're going to need is coffee. I'm catching just a little bit of a cold. Don't know why. Because it's cold. <clears throat> but, um, 
you need tools. So, let's get started on that. I'll put these off to the side. See, the other thing I... So you're going to want to get used to stuff like this, the bones. You know, understanding why. Why is this a problem? Why is this a bad one? Let's say... This is a good one. You see? Can you see that? I'll put that down on my jacket. So there, there. High contrast. Why is this a problem? But this one's okay. Ah, oh, Zeus is back. You're holding bones, man. Give me one of those. No. Um, because you never know. I mean, getting x-rays is a good idea because you can see what's inside. But if you've got a bone like this, you're going to have a problematic hoof and you have to trim for that. So we're... <laughs> We're hopefully talking about hooves that are healthy. That said though, actually, a lot of um, people who trim have a lot of trouble. I mean, everybody does, you know. We're not impervious to these problems that come up with the hooves. And how to fix them, like what is this? How do we deal with something like this, you know? It's hard. Um, but those are special cases, those are more special cases than... Right. Look at him, just waiting. Hey, what do you want? You're not getting anything. No. No bones for him. Okay, so let's talk about tools. Um, <coughs> there is a just a basic set of tools you're going to want if you want to get into this. If you're wondering what they are. Okay, I want to trim my horse's hooves. So now you're at the state. You're like, I want to trim my horse's hooves. I want to save some money. I want to pay more attention to their care and understand why things are happening. I want to work from the ground up, from the hoof up the horse, and understand things that are going on. You figure out, well, what do I use to do that? So now my my kit of stuff is geared towards fixing problems. So I'm not going to cover everything that's in here. It's not needed. For the basics of what you want to do when you want to start trimming, <clears throat> you're going to need a rasp. Now, a rasp is just a filing device. You know, I don't think they're anything really different than wood ones. You know, a wood rasp is just it's just a big file. There you can see. Hopefully that's clear. That's the rough side. And that's the smooth side. Well, smoother. Okay. So, very basics. You want a basic rasp with a reasonable amount of teeth with a decent depth to them. Hard to explain that precisely. If you get, if you get higher depth, less teeth, because um, there's only so much metal to go around, you'll take off more. So I suggest just sort of a medium coarse and a fine uh, edge on the other side. Um, nothing special. They are kind of pricey, but if you're just doing your own horse, these are going to last a while. Get a handle. It doesn't have to be plastic. It can be wood. Uh, it's handier, easier to hold. If you take the handle off, that <clears throat> this is what they look like so the handle you buy is usually a one size fits all deal put it in crash it on the ground stays on I bought red so I can see it because I'm always putting it down somewhere and lose it <clears throat> um, so yeah so a basic rasp uh, don't go for something that's super coarse. You'll just take off too much. Um, and a brand new rasp, if you buy them used or try to get them from a buddy or a farrier that's finished using them, they're going to be dull. Uh, dull rasps make for hard, especially for very dry hooves. So a sharp rasp, slightly wet hooves make things easier. <clears throat> so you could soak your horse's hooves if they're too hard, get into trouble. 
tools. So this is the first thing you need. You need a rasp because you got to work on the walls. This is for working on the walls, for trimming the walls. So, if for example we were to take a look at a hoof like this, and I were to come along from the bottom and start rasping where I think it should go, this is coming back for you know, so it takes a little bit even to shave it down. I don't even know if you're going to be able to see that. Even to shave it down a little. Work at it slow. It's not a busy, fast thing to do. In fact, you could do, you know, two feet in one day. You don't have to do all four. I know a lot of people that do. A lot of people that do. They just do the fronts or they just do the backs. You get tired. It's hard work. <clears throat> The next tool, I mean, you definitely need, definitely wear gloves, wear protection for your hands. It's just, yeah, the next thing you need, now, you don't need a pair of, you don't need an apron. I have an apron because I do more horses than I want to. Protects my legs, keeps me cleaner. You don't need one, but it's, they're nice to have. Okay. The next thing you're going to need, um, is a hoof knife okay this is a right-handed knife you can also get them left-handed i have a double-sided knife so i can use it it's right-handed but it does have a blade on the other side i find that handy some people don't like it at all and they don't recommend it at all because you can cut yourself because it's on both sides but i personally like it <clears throat> So you can get one of these and just whittle away at your horse's hooves, or you can get a right and a left of these. There's also called a hoop, uh, uh, a loop knife, but I'm not a fan of those, so I don't recommend them. But there's a, I like a loop, like it's um, there's this is a hook knife, and a loop knife is is just got it's just round in there. So um, a knife. Okay. Now the other thing that I recommend, let's see, uh, they're in they're in the back there. I don't use them very often. Um, you can get nippers, which is essentially just sort of like scissors, but like a, a clamp kind of thing. Um, I've got a small pair here, but essentially they they work like that now large nippers are very hard to use um, a lot of people complain about how difficult they are to hold how to squeeze uh, i almost never use nippers myself just these little ones <clears throat> to get into small places i rasp everything um, but some people really like nippers so you can get nippers but they're hard to use and you might find it discouraging to use them. Uh, rasping is a slower, more careful approach where you can really shape things. So I highly recommend just start with a rasp, go slow, start shaping things kind of deal slowly. Now these little dealios here are super handy. I do recommend getting these even if you're just starting out because they're small. See? You just fit in your hand a little and you can just get those little bits and pieces without having to use a knife um, very handy kind of pricey i think they're about 50 bucks rasps are usually about 20 to 30 bucks knives are depending on the quality i don't know you could probably find a decent knife 20 30 bucks maybe lasts a long time keep them sharp we'll talk about sharp things some other time so those are the basics if you want to get started hoof trimming your own horse's hooves you know really understanding uh, the internal structures of the hooves the outside why it's there um, looking at other people's trims studying up on some me methodologies of how to trim There's a few out there that are really good again i'll link them below just in case you're coming in late here and what are you talking about um, but I will make sure to get back to this later in the description and reference some stuff below. 
and um, from there, practice, 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 practice. And um, again, if you can find some cadaver feet to practice your technique of rasping, like I said here, you know, this old dried out one here. You know, when you're when you're rasping, you want to you want that rasp to do the work. You know? See, and then little things like this will happen. It'll start to chip off at the old dried hoof. Okay, that's okay. You take your smooth edge and you come in and round it off. Here, let's just do this one real quick. I'm sure what I'm doing, and a lot of them have questions. So, if you're thinking of getting into it, and you have somebody pretty good, just ask a whole pile of questions. Hopefully, they'll be open to answering them. Um, you know, and you can build on that. You know, and maybe even ask them if they could help you. Some don't want to because they lose a little bit of business, but... Oh no, does it go away? Is it dead? Can you see me now, you guys? I'm just looking at the comments now. I'm back? Okay, hang on, let me just check something. Yep, should be alright. It's back now. Boy, I wonder how much was gone. Uh, where did it leave off? Live streams just when I started rasping? Yeah. Well, I just rasped it down. Um, sometimes with too much movement, it, it loses it. But I just sort of just rasp things down to give me a nice that up beneath my jacket or something a nice edge here instead of this big bump here you see so the technique is just as long as this doesn't go out again but it's just you know slowly have the rasp do the work anyhow um yeah i really i i think i think that that slow way of doing it is really the best way. Nippers can take off a lot, you take off too much. Um, even the rough edge of the rasp can just one. Whoa, where did it go? It's too much. You know. But anyways, methodologies aside, um, I think anybody can trim their own hooves if you're if you're really inclined to do it. If you're really interested in that, um, you can. It's it's not as hard as you think. <clears throat> um, ask a lot of questions kind of okay so as for questions i'm going to get into questions let's see here oh wow all right let's start with nancy hi nancy if you're still here and hello tracy yes it is kind of cold Connie says she loves horses me too i love horses not too bad of weather there minus 13 who that's cold um you're currently tara you're currently trying to be a trimmer that's great. You know, there are a lot of schools out there as well. Not so many here in the lower mainland, BC. Uh, but there's a few in the States that are, my understanding, are pretty good. We do have one locally that's pretty good. and um, There's a lot of stuff online. Uh, Pete Ramey has a DVD set that I highly recommend, and I'll link these things below. Uh, and... He does a lot of examples, a lot of different types of horses. So, you know, not every horse is, definitely not every horse is going to look the same. Drafts look way different than Arabians, for example. Uh, quarter horses and thoroughbreds are very different. You know, it depends on what kind of horse you've got. You're going to see different stuff. So, that's cool. Good luck being a trimmer. Uh, yes, you're very welcome for the couch thoughts. Anytime. You let me know if you get bored of your horse. i got all kinds of things you can do. What are the best things to feed horses? What kind of horse is the best kind to own? <laughs> What's your name? Connie? Hi Connie. If you're still here. Um, the best kind of horse? I don't know. The kind that cares. The kind that's nice. If you're thinking about trail riding, you know, 
Don't get a thoroughbred, maybe. Uh, depends on what you want to do. Health-wise, uh, it's it's going to be highly dependent on their upbringing and how they are taken care of. I can't say I would recommend a particular breed. We've had good luck. Uh, I mean, I've seen good luck with uh, most draft crosses. I mean, we have Gracie, who's an Arabian, who's she's doing really well. Macaroni's a quarter horse. He's great. You know, a lot of people love quarter horses. There's piles of them everywhere. So. Uh, best things to feed horses? Mostly just hay. You know, feed a lot of hay. How about we do Q&A with Roni over here? That's a little. Hopefully the network doesn't die. Hey, buddy. Let's put you in the picture. Because everybody loves horses. Here. Okay. Continuing with Q&A in the sun with the horse. Um, so yeah, best things to feed horses mostly is just good hay, you know, good quality hay that uh, is tested. So be careful about getting stuff in sugar or something. Somebody's in class, Debbie. <laughs> Are you in class for what? Nancy says hi. Hey, Nancy says hello. Hey, buddy. I know. Don't touch my nose whiskers, they tickle. Okay. Uh, good to see your live streams. Yeah, I mean, I know it's unscheduled. I'm trying to schedule these things a little bit better. Where's everyone from? Oh, yeah, good question. Yep, you are down the road for me. Deleted your comment. I'm from the Maritimes. Chill. Ontario, UK at 7 p.m. Greenwood. NS means Nova Scotia, right? <clears throat> Cape Breton, Long Island. Everybody's saying hi. That's really nice. I'm really glad people say hi to each other. Sweden, it's 8 o'clock at night. Hi, Tara. Um, Zeus, yeah. He's, he's gone back to the house to go uh, sit in the sun. Uh, good slip protection without shoes. There's a lot of snow. My niece's horse can't be outside. Shoeless without sp Oops. Come back, comments. Don't know the English word for them. Uh, yeah, they're called studs. If you're still here, 69s. <laughs> That's me. Um, shoes, or, uh, you know, metal shoes you put on, or the boots that you can get. They'll have little pokey things. Those are called studs. And they allow for a little bit um better uh, grip in the snow so uh for me i think uh boots are pretty good roll up the rim to win is it a winner i don't know hang on cold enough that my coffee's getting a little chillier. If you guys don't know, here in Canada we have a company called Martins that makes average coffee. And uh, once a year or so they do this uh, roll up the rim to win. And what you do is you roll up the edge to see if you win something. So hang on. Completely anticlimactic. It says play again. Oh well. Thanks for asking, Nancy. I wish I could win a coffee. Usually you win a coffee or you can win a gift card or a donut or something. It's a donut shop. Okay, I put all my tools in my boot when I'm trimming. In your boot? Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah, another thing. I mean, when you get when you get along with with trimming and stuff, you are going to get a little toolbox, a little tool set that'll work. You know, you have a knife sharpener in there, maybe some stuff for thrush and stuff. This thrush is so common in so many places. I know I'm totally blown out with the sun here. 
<clears throat> yes, uh, Tara, great comment. Um, the smaller nippers are really good for just taking off bits and pieces of the frog rather than having to use a knife. Sometimes you'll slip a little with a knife. You'll take off a little, little bit too much if you're not careful. The little nippers are just, they're perfect for just clipping little bits and pieces off. But that's a whole other topic. That's why I re recommend them because you're going to find you'll use them. Do you ever offer clinics on trimming? Yeah, I do. Um, no, sorry, I haven't done anything on trimming yet. Uh, I have done three clinics on talking about uh, pathologies, uh, what's, a, what's a bad hoof look like and why, or what's a good hoof look like, recognizing good hooves because they're hard to see. Uh, in many cases, a lot of pictures out there show horses with not so good hooves. So I talk about how to recognize that, things that are happening, and then I, I might do something online one day. I don't know. It's it's hard, you know. It's time. So, um, and then the stream died. Sorry about that. So yeah, I mean, I do want to do trimming clinics. I've been asked many times to get on with doing something like that. Mainly because they're all my own clients that I do, and they say, you know, you should do something with a group, and we can all get together. Um, but you know, uh, all of my clients get the condensed version while I'm working on their horse, so they get very specific stuff for their horse. And it's very beneficial. Um, but understanding how lots of other ones work can apply in the future to your own. So it also is, it's, it's recommended to study up as much as you can. I mean, honestly, go to as many of these things as you can. I'll probably do that. But I'm learning a tad longer than the soul for traction. What are your thoughts? Because I follow the Facebook group that believes in bringing the bar to the soul level. <sighs> okay, so um, yes, the bars are for traction. <clears throat> no different than the heels of our feet of our shoes are for, for stopping mostly the bars don't really get used for a lot else they're primarily used grab a little edge to stop um, I don't it, is, it would be unusual for me to bring them right down to soul level uh, having a problem with a laid over bar or something that uh, was stuck in there and I might harp some, some bar and some overlaid stuff out. Uh, but I... What was that, guys? <clears throat> Something happened. So, yeah, I mean, you can do that. Um, Let's, let's move over this way. Maybe I won't be so blown out either. I can stand somewhere else. Something moved over here. Something freaked them all out. You guys will go this way. There. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's a it's a big topic. So my first trim was my own percher on. Took two days. I was wrecked. He was so patient with me, such a good boy. Okay, so the other thing to say, uh, <laughs> hey buddy, is um, it's hard work trimming. Be patient with yourself about it. Don't um, don't be hard on yourself if you find ah oh, this is so hard. I don't know how to do this or or whatever. Uh, you do, especially if they're really overgrown, if you've got to take a lot off. Um, I mean, even in the winter time, I might be all bundled up like this. I mean, ooh, it's so cold. By the time I'm trimming, you know, a, a more maybe a more hard to trim horse, it'll be, I'll be hot, be sweating, it's too much. So it's hard work. So, uh, that brings up another topic really quickly soft trimming. You're not going to want to do it. So as often as you can, get them good with their feet being picked up. I was just talking about this yesterday with another lady, and I can't stress enough how much you want to have good cooperation both ways. 
Don't be one of those people that feels like they have to force the horse into it. Get a little done, get out. Get a little done, get out. So, huge thing. A lot of people quit doing it because it's just too much work. The horse fights with them, blah, blah, blah. So, a perch run, big feet. Yeah, that was Rex. So, this picture just a good boy. You know, it's really, you, you get really lucky with, with the ones that have been trained up, have been, um, you know, uh, properly prepared for being trimmed and in. You know, I was actually, there was um, a comment came through not too long ago. I had, I had been working on Gracie in the video. And the lady says, I don't agree, because I don't tie up horses if I can help it. Um, it gives me an opportunity to do a little bit of groundwork if I need to. It forces me to tune into them as much as I expect them to tune into me. If you tie them, you can tune out. You can just concentrate which is very common, but I don't like it. So a lady said, I don't, I don't agree with not tying them. And I just said, that's okay. But you really, I think you do really want to get to that where you don't even have to put a halter up. You just go up to them and say, I just need to trim your feet. No different than you would brush them or hang out with them or whatever. They should just stick with you. So work on that. Work really hard on trying to get them cooperative and kind and willing, um, it'll make your trimming experience way better. So, good, uh, good point to bring up. Thanks, Tara. Hello, Teresa. Oh, thank you, Teresa. You are way too kind, far too kind. Um, did you trail rides with your own horses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, look back on videos. I've got quite a few. Um, I think everybody's been out other than Gracie. She's She's not ready to ride yet, but working on it. Working hard. Um, you're only getting choppy video and crackly audio. Oh no! Oh no! Well, sorry about the internet connection. I really the extender is just. 60 feet away. Usually it does pretty good. If I move too much. If I move too much, it sucks. So I will stand still. Uh, I am working on trying to get a better live stream setup, but it's just not happening yet. Um, due to time, but I will. And uh, this will um, sort of a kickstart into the idea. Some people just need that little bit of encouragement or. You know what? What's going on, big girl? Oh yeah, got it. Shake her head. Is the quality any better? No, I'm not. Rec I can redo this stuff. Um, it doesn't record it locally. It just goes up to YouTube as is, and hopefully is better. But with live to see it, I can repeat myself. Like I, you can do it. You know, a little bit of a kickstart of where you might want to go, how you might want to start. Um, and you're not alone. Many, many people out there are trying to do the same thing. Uh, we have no idea where to get going with it. So it's just something I wanted to cover. I got to get uh, on with things. I think we're going on an hour. Uh, phone, I'm using a phone. Um, it's easy. I just take it out of my pocket. I stick it on a... I probably would not do this if I had to bring out my computer and set up some camera or some crap like that. This is just easy. I can get out my thoughts. But quite a bit of information has come about. So... Uh, do I take people out for horse rides? Only... I... I would never take out beginners. I would never take out some place or whatever. Everybody that goes out on the trail run. Change the lighting. Okay, let me know when it's good so I can answer this question. We'll put Gracie in the picture. Put 
little smoother. Got some audio. The chat's working anymore. Something's really bad. Okay, let's go closer to the extender. <clears throat> go this way. Audio's back. Not face the sun. Any better? Closer to the house now. It was better near the truck. Well, I'm right next to the truck. Um, well, if anybody's really stuck this out this far, great. Uh, I'll cover this again. I think I will do a proper, you know, video. Uh, with my real camera possible it's a big deal a lot of people want to know this stuff so i value that anyways uh, i'll work on the live stream bit uh, but as for taking people out um, i try to make sure that they are well prepared uh, for things that can happen uh, a lot of people that go out on trail rides that i know of uh, they're not prepared for things that could go wrong they're not prepared for uh, any type of spooking, any type of problems. They're not prepared for the horse to go through their hands. They're not prepared for the horse not to stop. They're not prepared on how to turn um, or back up or get around something. And so taking people out is a real risk to both the rider, them, and the, uh, the horse. Because if the rider falls off and the horse takes off because it's pretty worried for some reason now you've got a loose horse that can get pretty worried uh, and crash into things you know try to find its way somewhere away you know and you got to try to catch it so to, to me it's a it, it's making sure that the people who are riding are riding with an understanding of what horses are capable of and you see a lot of these dude ranch strings kind of out there not a lot of them a few and most of them have been shut down most of them get some kind of person that gets hurt and then they get sued and then they're gone um and uh it's unfortunate you know so really it's best um people that i have taken out have usually taken a bunch of lessons with me or i've observed and watched them ride in the arena or somewhere and i know that they're going to be okay or they've got their own horse if you have your own horse cool man let's go for a ride that's cool i like that um but using one of our own horses they they respond a little differently than than others i think you know, a little more sensitive to being yanked on and stuff and, and you won't get a response that you might get out of one that's regularly yanked on kind of thing does that make sense i mean Always just trying to be careful and, and safe. So, streams better? Right on. Um, Pixelate. That's stupid internet. Uh, anyway, so I'll get back with a proper video. I think I will. Maybe I'll do it today if I can find the time to just do uh, a uh, sort of a review of the live stream because everybody that watches this is going to thumb down it and be like, ah, your video sucks and your audio sucks. And, I'm really sorry. So, um, yeah, we're fine in the beginning. Oh, you wish you knew these things when you had a horse? Yeah. You know, hindsight is twenty twenty sometimes, and, and the amount of information that's coming out of the internet uh, nowadays, uh, you, you can learn so much. I mean, it's amazing. It's really, really cool. So. Anyways, I'm going to get on with uh, work work. I've got some training to do, some chores to do. Uh, I don't see any more questions coming in. So. Oh, yeah, thank you. Really appreciate all the time everybody's kind of put into comments and questions. Um, you know, it's a big deal. There's a real community that's kind of coming together here, I feel. And like-minded people and people who are sort of on the fence. Um, come in and ask stuff and that's really nice so 
I'm going to try to keep this up. I'm going to try to keep up at least one live stream a week. I did have an idea that came through, which I thought was great, of scheduling it come, as they say, come hell or high water. It's happening at this time. Um, so I think I might do that and uh, figure out a day and time I can commit and uh, uh, subject to commit to or subjects to commit to and go from there. So kind of chilly. Need to start moving. Um, oh, one more. You know, a lot of people do say, oh, sorry, it's just so hard to see in the sun. Marion, yeah, you, uh, I remember you commented on the blanketing one. Thanks for that comment. Uh, it's a good one. And as for the icicles, totally true. You can have a horse that sort of looks like it's frozen on the outside, but you go to, t but, um, mentor you that you respect and you can see their work is good. The horses that they have go from wrecked to sound not from sound to wrecked or stay slightly wrecked, you know, for a long time without good explanation. Ask questions, all kinds of stuff. Oh, I'm gone again. Have a great evening. It's actually still morning here. It's only 1140. If you've come in at the end, um, you know, you can always go back through it. But Teresa, if you have any questions, you ask me anytime you want. That's my fault. I will. I will schedule something. I'll figure it out today and I'll put a note somewhere. Um, it's hard to do on YouTube because the videos kind of just come and go. Um, we put a lot of our stuff on Facebook that is um, sort of notices or whatever. We might get the website updated one day. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I'll figure it out. You guys will figure. You'll you'll know. And um, yeah, I mean, let's get this figured out so that you guys can show up and not feel like you come in late. But um, yeah, you, Teresa, you you didn't you missed uh, just a big conversation about um, talking about if you know what what to get started with, where to start with trimming your own horse's hooves, you know, for reasons of you want to know what's going on you're you're worried something might be not right you've got a feeling inside the person you've got doing it isn't answering the questions you want answered um it's so common so i don't want anybody to feel alone when, when, when uh you're you're dealing with your horse care provider and they're kind of aloof or they're kind of you know evasive or something like that they may not know um, but you'd want to know that they'd want to know and figure it out so it's it's common you know this is how we solve it we sort of figure things out and go from there so i want this to be an encouragement for people to to feel free to get out and ask questions and study on your own it is very possible to do it i have many clients that do touch-ups and kind of maintain things and then i'll come in and we'll talk about how to balance and how to get things a little bit better uh, some of the problems that you see so Anyways, that's it for now, I think, unless there's another question. So far, no. And I will do my best to get this uh, internet thing figured out. Something's going wrong. Maybe it's on the whole line. It might not be the extender. So, thanks for everybody. Thank you, Teresa. Um, if you guys have questions, uh, stick them below, too. I'll answer them later when I get inside and warm up. A little chilly, beautiful day.